My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop. It was like, uh, uh, my name's Matt, welcome back to the shop. <laughs> Fucking hell, I, I swear to God. I'd, I'd blame the drink if I really drank anything. <laughs> my name's Matt, welcome back to the shop. And today we're talking about con rods. So I've got these printed out just so the fucking hell I know what I'm talking about. So uh, you will notice out there in the world there are two types of con rods. Uh, there are what we call I beams, I beams, and H beams. And how do you know what you've got? Let me get them. That'll be the easiest way to show you. Oh, fucking sure. That's a bit of a crap example. We won't be using that. If you can see like this with the rod facing towards you like that, where the two, the axis of the two, um, the big end and the small end are facing towards you, and you can see there's a groove inside it there, that is an I beam. So basically, if we look, you've got your throws of your crank, you've got your webs, and blah 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 blah. If you lay your rod flat, uh, no, if you point your rod towards you like your piston, so let's just say you're looking down your bore, right? You will see the cross, well, you won't see it, but the cross section of your rod will be in the shape of an eye if you look down your cylinder bore that's how you imagine it H rods on the other hand are obviously the complete opposite of that where if you look down your bore you would see something like this so what is the difference so we've all been fooled <laughs> a lot of magazines and shit and all the rest of it they fool you into thinking that H rods are better are a lot better -er. It's complete bollocks. Uh, here's a high performance engine, these are drag rods. Here's another one, that's another dragster rod. As you can see, these two rods don't have cutouts in the sides, they are I beam rods. If you look at the H2R, the dick and the balls, if you look at your R1, so on, so on, so on, and so on, you will see that these are all I beam rods. So, what is it? You know, this is a, um, a Carrillo rod. This one, this is a H-beam rod you can just barely make out because the light is shite. Jesus Christ. There we go, that's a bit better. That's more like fucking Halloween, isn't it? You can see that that's a H-rod. So what is the difference between these? Um, it's because of where these rods come from. So this rod is from a V8 and a lot of performance aftermarket engine parts. We're not talking about... Uh, you know, slip on exhausts and all the rest of it, or stuff like that. Um, a lot of the um, the bulk of all the aftermarket parts, the business of aftermarket engine components, is heavily steeped in V8s. Uh, why? Because American V8s are shit. They're from the fucking 50s and 60s, and they're, they're stuck in the fucking past. But anyway, um, yeah, you know, so a lot of aftermarket stuff, if you just put aftermarket rods, you'll see loads of these fuckers. So what's the what's the jib? Um, the difference between the two is generally speaking, if you have two rods that are the same, then a H rod is going to be heavier. So a H rod like this, or an I rod like this, the H rod is going to be the heavier one, right? So th this is going to be heavier, and this is going to be lighter. So all of a sudden you can see straight away why motorbike manufacturers still want to beam, build I-rods. So why do H-rods and I-rods even exist? When you get your V8 and it made 230 horsepower or whatever, and you put aggressive cams in it, hydraulic lifters, you've had your fucking cylinders bored out, you've had forged pistons put in, you've had all this shit, you've done all of this stuff to it because you're trying to tweak it. What you are doing is you are getting your base power plant and you are increasing the power generally nine times out of ten by just increasing the amount of pressure that's in your cylinder um, by whatever means. By increasing the volumetric efficiency, by blowing it, turboing it, whatever you want to do. Which generally means that the compressive forces that are pushing down on your rod have increased. This is what eye rods are good at and it's generally to do it's a bit of both it's to do with their geometry and it's also to do 
um, with the fact that they are heavier. So what I did is I did some really quick um, analysis stuff on uh, SolidWorks just to show you. And I'll put the pictures up because I can't show you these. We'll be here for all, all week. So when you look at, let me find it. When you look at an iRod, um, what's that one? Um, but here's next to each other, here's the iRod on the left. So we'll always do the iRod. Fucking hell, do it properly. iRod on this side, HRod on this side. So here's the iRod and you can see uh, that the stress is basically at the neck. It's at the surface of the neck. Now this is in direct compression. This is pushing straight down. Uh, and the big end is fixed. It's just to do the analysis to show you the strength of the rod. If you look at the H-rod, you can see ah, there's less red. There's less surface stress in there. It's a lot more complicated than this, which is what we're going to go through in a minute. Now, rods are not just pushed down. You don't just get a rod like this and you go, hi -ya, cowabunga, and put loads of force on it. Actually... Rods are put under a lot more force, or higher forces, like this. So, that's even, that's wrong, dickhead. Like this. So the force is going straight down with the piston, but the rod is already kicked out. And basically what we have here is, if you put a line through it, we have a, an, a force that's going this way and this way. So you have a net force that's actually not going through the centre of the rod. This causes a, a slight bending moment. And this is where rods have to survive as well. Is that the basically get my monster rod out? It's the rod is being pushed down, but the crank pin is down here. So you do get a slight bending moment in the rod. I say slight; it's fucking really high. <laughs> There's also uh, tensile stresses when the rod goes up, but these are both steel rods, and the shape doesn't really help that um, for tensile stresses. That's generally just the cross section of the steel. Um, but here's two pictures. You can see this picture again. I, I rod on I beam on the side on this side. H rod on this side, and you can see that the um, the distribution of stress along that H rod along this side is a lot higher um, and a lot more uh, focused than it is for the I beam. You can see that from the I beam one. Um, so basically, what's the crack here? You know, what's the difference? I, uh, H beams are only stronger rods because there are, there's more of it. And why is there more of it? So basically, what are the differences? We've got these lovely, colourful pictures, but what are the differences? So if you have a rod like this, and just say we're looking, you know, we're looking straight down the rod, we're looking straight down like that, uh, and you've got your centre of axis here. This is your big end, small end. So that's big, small end axis that goes through there. Um, so we're basically like this. When we uh, nibble out of this rod with an eye beam, we nibble it out here like so. And we've got that eye shape. All wonderful. If we do the same thing for our H rod, like this, we are cutting out here and here. Now we get that, obviously, the H beam shape. Absolutely fucking wonderful. Now, the difference is, is when you look from the side. The problem with an eye rod, because rods are generally quite broad, and they're broad because they have to go from a small end to a big end. So you have to have this expanse that basically goes out. Um, so if I draw that, you've got a small end, you've got a big end, and you have to basically go from there to there like that. Now you do cut, excuse me, cuttings or whatever. But basically you have to do that transition. When you do a H rod, the amount of material you can cut out is like this. Um, generally, basically like that, through the side walls. But this is only so wide. There's only so much you can take out. When you look at a uh, I-beam, so same kind of thing. We've got our flanks like this. When we take out our I-beam, we can actually take out all of this, theoretically. We can take out, you know, this is the outcut we make here. It follows the profile from the small to the big, where the I bit at the H rod can only take out this slim profile. That's all it can do. Why the I beam can take out basically as much as it bloody wants as long as it's following this contour. Now that's a bit of a bad example because it's just a straight one. Um, 
and a lot of rods are straight because they're trying to be light especially for motorbikes um, so basically H rods are good because when you go from this big end to this small end there is basically this transition and then the meat is taken out the sides like this so when you're under compression when you're being squashed when this rod is being squashed and it's got that slight deflection it can basically distribute the stress from this small end to this big end and it has this full surface to do this in a sense it's almost like two beams like that but the problem is is you can't remove as much material so the h-beams are heavier so h-beams are very good at taking compressive loads and tensile loads but their bending moments aren't as good because of the way um, surface stress propagates and blah 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 but they are heavier because you can't remove as much material out of these as you can an eye rod this is why with more bikes where high rpm is concerned they always go for eye rods and even with formula one um, which we'll get to in a second so if we look at the eye rod and we look at the stresses involved you can see there and let me draw this out so you know exactly what the fucking know I'm talking about you can see that we've got this eye beam rod here with all this shit missing like so you can see here like that yeah yeah you get it fucking rod right you can see there's a stress region here right fucking sound right then so what you can see is there's this high stress region here so just for the shits and giggles right how do we get rid of that stress region well what you can do is you can cheat and you can put a bridge in you just put a bridge in there like so just to stiffen up that region and that's exactly what i did in this other um, example here i put the crudest bridge that you've ever seen and that's that picture here obviously all the radio the radii and fillets and all the rest of it to distribute stress over the, the um instead of having stress risers um you can see there that bridge has actually reduced that amount of stress it's basically taken out now obviously the rod's heavier but there is a picture and i'll put that picture up now if you can see in formula one they've actually gone for a very space age looking but they've gone for an i-beam rod you know it has it's like this it is an i-beam rod because formula one engines do go to stupidly high rpm so they do care about stuff like that but you can see that they've basically you know with a lot of because they've got a lot of spare time these guys that's exactly what they've done it's not asymmetrical like that. that's just my shit drawing um but they've basically done exactly that they've put this brace in they've put this brace in there to relieve the stress that that rod during its bending moment that's exactly what they've done this is basically like me just putting a fucking block in there like i did very crudely um just to show you the point that if that this is what they do is they take something they do physical tests on it they basically bend it in machines they'll do fae they'll do um finite element analysis that's what FA, fae is which is basically that kind of stuff um and basically you do all these things and then you can you know you can just basically make a space age rod like they have where well, they are bothered about weight but they're also bothered about the fucking thing snapping um h rods are good in compression so when you're turboing supercharging or just basically cramming a shitload more ton fuel and air in there and going bang and increasing power that way not by rpm means but basically by just shoving more power in then i rods is where it's at i rods uh, h rods is where it's at because basically they are heavier rods um and i rods are lighter rods and because motorbikes the h2r the r1 all this kind of shit because they run to stupidly high rpms reducing the reciprocating and oscillating mass of that con rod means an awful lot so this is why you know it's not that these guys that make h rods are severely clever and people at yamaha are all fucking suzuki are all fucking dumb it's the fact that they are for two different applications there's a video i'm going to talk about soon about an i3 where they get carillo rods and put it in an r3 and it's just totally fucking overkill and missing the point completely hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit well if we look at a rod and we'll say that our wrist pin goes through it that way or our crank pin goes through it that way with an i-beam what you do is you cut out this center section like this to make 
this I beam. This is not a H beam, unfortunately. This is an I beam. I should really let's start that again. 